Greetings, 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 YouTube viewers and Facebook viewers. This is Sister Catherine uh, Myers coming to you this wee hours of the night. Uh, oh my, and I want to welcome you to my prayer channel. And as I said, I think it's about midnight here in Vancouver, Washington. And please excuse my bed cap. There are times when you will see me in bed caps and all hours of the night because uh my goal is to be obedient to the holy spirit and so uh if the holy spirit uh leads me to come on the station come in and, and minister after hours or after i've already gone to bed and i wake up and uh i'm led to uh come to you at that time then my goal and my job is to uh, take heed and and to be obedient to the Holy Spirit, my comforter, at all times. And so, with that again, I want to welcome you to my prayer channel. And uh, I'm going to start off by reading a scripture that I was giving. And then I'm going to allow the Holy Spirit to have this way. I'm going to be reading from Isaiah the 55th chap chapter verses 1 through 13 ho oh, everyone that thirsted come ye to the waters and he that had no money come ye buy and eat yea come buy wine and milk without money and without price wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread and you labor for that which is satisfy it not. Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear, and come unto me. Hear, and your soul shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Behold, I have given him a for a witness to the people, a leader and commander to the people. Behold, thou shalt call a nation that thou knowest not, and a nation that knew not thee shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God, and for the Holy One of Israel, for he had glorified thee. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way, and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down, and snow from the heaven, and return it not thither, but watereth the earth, and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing wherewith I sent it. For ye shall go out with joy, and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree, and instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree. And it shall be to the Lord for a name, for everlasting sign 
that shall not be cut off. And again, I'm going to just go back to verse 11. Because uh, this is where the Lord, the, the Comforter is leading me to stress. So again, this is Isaiah 55 verses 1 through 13. And I'm just going to read uh, verse 11 again for you, which says, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. And another scripture I'm going to read right quick is in Genesis, the first chapter, 1 through 3. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, Let there be light. And there was light. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the doing of his word. In Jesus' name, in the Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. Children of the Most High God, I am so honored to come before you tonight. And I feel led by the Holy Spirit to talk a little bit about, again about, I know we've been on the subject of the importance of what we say to ourselves, what we speak over ourselves, and what we believe in the things that we think. And as you read, as, as I read through these scriptures, especially verse 11, and we, when we see where it says that God said that when, when he spoke his word out of his mouth, that it will not return into him void, but it shall accomplish the thing for which he said, you know. And also in Genesis, in the beginning, it says that God created the heavens and the earth, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. I want to remind you again that we are created in the image and likeness of the Almighty God. And just as God spoke forth the words, the, the worlds into creation by the power of his mouth, by the things that he spoke, and we, his children, being created in his image and in his likeness, we do call forth and speak our worlds, our experiences, into existence by the power of our mouth. And uh, I feel the Holy Spirit is leading me to stress this again because it's even more evident more and more each day. And, and we, we're not really taking heed to how powerful we are. And that, you know, the Messiah said that, uh, that the works that he did, you know, that we would do greater works. And that when we ask anything in his name, that he would do it, you know. And I think we're still missing the fact that just as Jesus is the son of the living God, and uh, we too, walking in Christ, following Christ, followers of a Christ, who've been adopted into the heirship, you know, of the Christ consciousness, we also, we walk as Christ on the earth clothed in the Christ consciousness. We are creators of our own life experiences. And whatever we feed, that's what we become. Everything starts with a seed. That mustard seed that Jesus talked about. 
And it's not just believing in the miracles that that mustard seed is created or believing in the little things or believing in the mountains. It's every single thing. It starts with a seed. Whether we believe in for good or for bad or whether we speak in good or bad. So when we speak the uh, and talk about the sicknesses that cover and and take over our lives every time we speak about that sickness every time we claim that sickness every time we call it our own we give it power we feed it we become what we feed we become what we speak we become what we believe and I, like I said, I'm, I'm not judging you. I'm telling you. But these last two years until I woke up two months ago in that hospital, I was doing the same thing. All these years that I've worked on different jobs and for the last 10 years, I worked as a caregiver giver, taking care of sick people. And then for the last two years when I had to walk in their shoes and become a sick person, to really grasp and understand what was going on. And I'm telling you, it started with the seed of the high blood pressure. And then it grew and grew. And I would hear myself, I, I, even when I think back, when it first started and the doctors got all panicked. When I was in New Orleans is when it first started. Where, and they put me in the hospital then and started talking about my blood pressure and wouldn't get, I was going for a job with the city of, of New Orleans. I had got uh, offered a job with the city of New Orleans and I had to pass a physical and that doctor would not pass my physical because of the blood pressure. And from there, then on, I heard myself saying, as I look back, my high blood pressure, my high blood pressure. The high blood pressure turned into chest pain. The ch and then, then it turned into osteoporosis. Then it turned into another thing and another thing. The list grew and grew and grew. And I got here in Vancouver and I kept get, going to, I had two trips in the hospital in New Orleans and then four trips here in Vancouver in these last couple of months. And I, and I woke up in that hospital bed and realized I'm feeding this thing. I'm creating it. I'm making it worse. Yes, it may have been presented to me two years ago, or even I would say a year ago when it really got bad. When the when the when New Orleans when the people in New Orleans, the doctors in New Orleans, wouldn't allow me to go to work, wouldn't allow me, wouldn't pass my physical for that job that I was uh, offered, and from there. It just took a life of his own. And that's what it is. When God spoke the world into existence, and when he said, let there be light, and there was light, then it life took a life of his own. Everything that he spoke into existence came forth the same way. Everything we speak into existence, everything we believe, everything we feel, everything we think and and call forth it takes a life of his own and it's up to us to change it we it brings us right back to that place where i said god said i set before you two roads life and death one road leads to life and one road leads to death and he said, and just in case we still weren't sure and we were confused about which road to take to choose, he said, choose ye life. So the sickness is there. The pain is there. Just as the healing is there. The restoration is there. It's up to us to choose. I have to choose, and it's not and it's not a one-time thing. Just like creating this sickness in my body was not a one-time thing. It happened over time with me constantly accepting it. And every time I would go to the doctor and they give me another pill and another sickness, and I just kept accepting it and accepting accepting it and telling telling my friends and friends and family about it oh when they said I have this oh when they said I have that and and each time it got piled on top of each other until 
that last time I told you two months ago, when that sickness and that and that that when it finally took a life of its own and to begin to, to shake my entire world and uh the the chest pain and the and the blood pressure got out of got out of control and and I saw myself facing you know either a heart attack or a, or a stroke that's that was my wake up call that shook me and I realized I I woke up I came to myself you know there's a story about a prodigal son who you know he he had told his father he wanted his inheritance so his father gave him his inheritance and he went and squandered it and found himself sleeping in a pig pen. And that's what it is. We all have the inheritance. See, we have the gift of eternal life. We have the gift of divine health. We have the gift of divine wealth. And sometimes we just go and squander it, you know. And then that, that son, when he realized, he woke up, you know, and he woke up and found himself in that pig pen. And then he told us, you know, I'm going back to my father's house. You know, and, and he went and asked for mercy from his father because he realized, you know, that he came from greatness, that his father, you know, uh, was own stuff he was a land on i forgot which father you know the actual story but i just remember the bits and pieces of it i just know that i remember that he had two sons and one the youngest son decided that he just wanted to go he asked for his inheritance and his dad gave it to him and he let and the oldest son stayed there you know and worked and and, and served the father so when the youngest son came back the dad was so happy to see him so the dad just got the got out the best pig and whatever and roasted it for him. Not pig, but they probably don't. The Jews don't eat pigs, but you know what I'm saying. He took out the best whatever it was that they ate, and he and he roasted it for him and he gave him the best royal robes and he had a celebration. And the oldest son got kind of jealous and the dad explained to him, "It's just that you've been with me here all along, but your brother, your my child, he was lost. He." Was went out there and and got into the world and became lost but now he's found you know and when I read the scripture that I just read that's what I see with the father he understands that there's gonna be a time sometimes when we go down that wrong road like me choosing that sickness and accepting what the doctor said and accepting the doctor's report that was me choosing the wrong road but the minute I was like that son that prodigal son that's what it is the prodigal son I was the prodigal daughter and I came to myself and I shook myself and I said, Father, wait, I don't have to just lay here and die in this hospital. You came that I might have life and that I might have it more abundantly. You sent your word and healed my disease and by his stripes I am healed. So when I started speaking that on my life, my father didn't throw me away and say, no, that's it. You're just going to have to go on with that high blood pressure. He took me into his arms and the Holy Spirit, he healed me. He brought me back to myself. He brought me back to the state of mind and the state of consciousness that God have all because it's already here. It's a gift. We just have to accept it. God is not going to override our free will. So all we have to do is remember who we are and remember whose we are and the gift that the price and the price that's already been paid. Just like the prodigal son. We are the prodigal sons and the prodigal daughters. And all God wants is for us to return to him. Everything is already provided. We just have to return to him. He said his word will not return void, but it shall accomplish the thing for which it was sent. See, he already sent his word to heal our disease. We are already healed. Our job is to accept it. The healing is already there. It was, It's there. The gift is there. We just have to remember who we are and whose we are. And that God loves us so much that it is not his will, not his will that not even one perish, but that all receive the gift of eternal life. 
So right now, I hear the Holy Spirit say that with this being said, he wants me to pray for his prodigal sons and prodigal daughters who have been caught up in a disease of sickness and unbelief and all the other things following that rule that leads to death. He wants you to know that he's waiting. He's waiting with the best of the, of the roast to, to roast for you. He's waiting for the, with the royal robes to cover you. And you know what the true royal robe is? It's his presence, the Holy Spirit, the presence of the Most High God. That's the royal robes. That's the robe he wants to cover you with. That's the robe he covers me with. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty God. I now abide under the shadow of the Almighty God. I am clothed in His robes of righteousness. My mind is now clothed in the Christ consciousness. I don't, I no longer have to die and I shall live and not die and declare the works of the almighty God. So right now, I'm going to pray for all the prodigal sons and prodigal daughters who have lost their way. And the father, father is saying, whosoever will let them come. He's waiting just for you to receive your healing, to receive your restoration, to receive your gift of light. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your grace which is sufficient. I thank you that you sent your word and healed our disease and by your stripes we are already healed. I thank you that your word does not return void, but it goes forth and accomplishes the thing and the purpose for which it is sent. I thank you that you, you, that you created and formed the worlds and called them into the existence by the power of your mouth, of your word, that you said, let there be light, and there was light. And I thank you, Father, that you said that it is not your will that any perish, but that all come into the knowledge and to come into the gift and receive the gift of eternal life. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every prodigal son. I pray for every prodigal daughter who have lost their way. I pray for everyone who right now are filled with sickness and disease, who have believed the doctor's report. And every single day they're talking about the sickness. They're talking about the disease. They're talking about the aches. They're talking about the pains. And they don't realize that every time they talk about it, every time they, they, they claim it as their own, they, they're feeding it. They don't understand that the power that you've endured us with, that we are the sons and daughters of God, that we were created in the image and likeness of God, and that as we speak and, and, and believe and accept things over our life, we create our life experience, and that all it takes is a change of mind. All it takes is a change of heart. All it takes is a change of direction. Just change your mind. Just change your heart. Just change your thoughts. Just change your words and say, I shall not die. I shall live and not die and declare the works of the almighty God. That I receive the gift of life that I receive and I believe that you sent your word and healed my disease. And by his stripes, I am already healed. And I accept my healing. And from this day forth, I shall not believe the report of the doctors. But I shall believe the report of the Lord. 
which says, I am healed, I am delivered, and I am free. For he who the Son sets free is free indeed. And Holy Spirit, Spirit of the Most High God, you are welcome in this place. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for you are the presence, you are the power, you are the anointing that breaks the yoke of bondage, sickness, and disease. And Holy Spirit, you are the Spirit that that roamed on the waters when God said that the that the earth was void and without form. And God said, let there be light. And it was your power and your anointing that brought forth the light. It was your hand that moved upon the waters that brought forth life. And right now, Holy Spirit, I call forth your power and your anointing to bring forth life to your children, to bring forth healing to your children, to restore your children to their right place in God, that they may be clothed in the right mind, in the mind of the Christ consciousness, that they may be have eyes that see as you see, ears that hear what the Spirit is saying to the church, and take out the heart of stone and give them a heart of flesh, that they may have understanding with all they getting, that they may get an understanding, that they may know God even if they are known that they will receive the gift of healing because it is said in your word no one can come to the father unless the holy spirit draws them and holy spirit spirit of the most high god i ask that you draw forth the children of the most high god draw forth the prodigal sons draw forth the prodigal daughters and bring them back home bring them back to the fold of the father Bring them back that they may return, that their hearts may return to the Father, and the Father's heart will return to them. And I thank you that it's already done, that when I pray you answer, and that you hear me, and that you do a quick work, and that none of my words fall to the ground, but that they go forth and accomplish the thing for which they were sent, the thing and the purpose for which they were sent, and I declare it done in Jesus' name, and I thank you for it, Father. And I shall now pray in the Spirit to seal it, that my prayer may reach the throne room of grace, a, a direct connection from my body, which is the temple of the living God into the throne room of grace. Hallelujah, <laughs> Eli, Ekeshia la sia la, ha makashia le sia la, e la sio lo ho makashi, e sio lo, Eli, Ekeshia la sia la ha makashi, e sia la ha la kashi, Eli, e sio lo, Eli, i mokoshia la sia ma, a di Allah ta kadi le sia ka, Ekeshia lo ho makashi, Eli, Ekeshia la si. Hali olohu ka maria la Hali asi olohu ya makashe Hali Allah ya desi olohu Hallelujah 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 Thank you Lord Thank you Lord Thank you Lord It is done It is done It is done In Jesus name In the Christ name Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. Children of the Most High God, just please, please, please remember who you are. 
walk in the fullness of who you are in the Christ consciousness. Know that you are loved more than you can ever grasp. More than you will ever understand. And please choose. Return to your father. That he may return to you. Again, I want to remind you about my book. Dare Not Think. Entering Silence. The Church Without Walls. There's a lot of good information about the power of our thoughts. And how how our thoughts create and form our life experience. If you haven't already, get your copy today. Either at Amazon.com or Barnes & Noble. And remember to be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. God loves you. And I love you too. Sister Catherine Mary McWilliams Myers. Amen. Amen. And amen.